And what's the mood in the Labour camp at the moment? Because obviously, you know, the, the polls appear to be tightening up a little bit. It still yeah. looks as though it's all to play for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think from what I can see and what I can feel, the mood is very, very good. People are working flat out. People are not taking any vote for granted. There are millions of conversations happening. We have, you know, so many activists out on the doorsteps and they are um, battling door by door to kind of cut through some of the, the noise that's that's kind of presented nationally um, and make sure that people know exactly what we stand for. And actually, I have to say, we've got an absolutely excellent manifesto, which is fully costed. And well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Really, I mean, you know, not everybody really agrees proud. with that. Well, they, they might not agree, but it's a fact that we've we've published our grey book, um, that their details, our spending commitments, um, that we've also talked in our in our manifesto about um, all of our infrastructure commitments. I think actually what people are saying on the doorsteps are two or three things, and one of them obviously is what why I'm talking to you today so one of them is definitely about the nhs the next is about in work poverty lots of people um are telling me on the doorsteps in fact one person said to me yesterday and we're just kind of surviving around here not thriving and um these are people you know the constituency i wish to represent um are people who are in work because we know there is a huge in work poverty problem yeah, and you've picked on a few. You've picked on a few yeah. businesses this morning. Asda amongst mm-hmm. them, Amazon, Sports Direct, Uber, and uh, a company called ISS. Both yeah. Asda and Amazon are refuting everything that you say, saying that they're, mm-hmm. you're absolutely wrong to say that they treat their workers wrongly. Asda say okay. they've just given their workers a pay rise. They employ 120,000 people, and it's mm-hmm. not really fair to say that they treat their workers badly. Why have you picked on mm-hmm. Asda as opposed to Tesco's? For example, well, I think we're talking about because quite a lot of our proposals are actually um, for the whole of a sector, to so say for the whole of retail. Um, I think you know, Asda has very recently engaged in a dispute, which was unfortunate. Uh, you know, staff um, felt like they had to sign contracts or they would lose their jobs, and that's not really um, what we would permit under a Labour government. Why would you not want your workers to sign a contract, though? Well, it was a contract that they believed would degrade their terms and conditions, and we think that rather than that being on a take-or-leave-it basis, we should move towards a system of negotiation, essentially, and that's what we're proposing, that um, people would, by sector, be able to, through a system called sectoral collective bargaining, and apologies if that sounds quite confusing, but it is very clear... No, I remember the 70s, I remember collective bargaining, (laughs) and we we can talk about the RMT dispute with uh, South West Trains, which has not worked terribly well on the collective bargaining front. Seven days of strikes, people are trying to get to work, they can't do it. I've got people yeah, working here not, in this office, right? Current, no, but I've got people working in this office who've just paid 80 mm-hmm. quid for a, a weekly season ticket and they can't get on the train. Yeah, and obviously, like, it is so, you know, so annoying when something's not your fault and you can't get to work. But the, the, the point is, we are not currently working under a system of sectoral collective bargaining. So you kind of talk there about the 70s and you talk there about, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why you brought that in. But well, because um, what... collective bargaining was a big phrase in the 70s. Yeah, and 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 um, we saw much less pay inequality. <laughs> you know that that is just a fact. And what we are saying is that actually a system where terms and conditions are negotiated actually leads to much less industrial action because uh, all of the issues that relate and pertain to a work and life are sorted out at source. Where you yeah, have but there was a, there was a, there was a lot more disruptive action and strike action in the seventies than there is nowadays. Where you have, I'll just finish, where you have employers, associations and workers' representatives meeting together to negotiate all aspects of life. And that, of course, reduces the propensity that workers would need to take industrial action because lots of the issues are are worked out before that. But what we're saying is currently there are 14.3 million people in poverty. There are two million. I don't believe that figure. When when you you describe, yeah, no, when you describe poverty. Well, hang on. Yeah, well, the United Nations say a great many things. What do you describe as poverty? Because the United Nations describes poverty as a family living in a household where less than uh, £21,000 is coming in. I don't call that poverty. Right, okay. So if you can't afford gas and electricity... and If you're making £21,000 a year, you're not 
in poverty, are you? But do you know, but do you know how much people's expenditure is? You yes, know, you I do. About I know exactly how much. Ex- I know exactly how much people's rent, expenditure is. Yes. Bills and like people's pay has stagnated. No, but the so point is are... that poverty has been redefined, Laura, and that is one of the problems for people in the world now, because unfortunately, poverty is recognised <laughs> as being below a median figure. But actually, mm-hmm. if you talk, if you want to talk about proper poverty, twenty-one thousand pounds a year is not poverty, is it? Come on. Right. Well, 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 let's think about this. I represent people in North West Durham. There's very high levels of employment, actually. I don't think unemployment here is the exact issue. How we define unemployment, by the way, is an interesting one. Because say if you've got four hours, you're technically not unemployed. Right. But um, it's not necessarily a full, a full work and week. People are, uh, there is a low pay endemic in the North East. So if you are on £8.21, we know that that does not, the facts just tell us, does not allow you uh, to live a good life where you are topping up your wages, um, so your low pay, you are topping it up uh, with debt. If we look at the social but tax pa- sector, but taxpayers are also topping it up with tax credits, aren't they? And I yes, think that's a terrible I, I th- system. I think you're right. So there are state subsidies for yeah. low pay, and that has to come to an end. We want to eradicate in-work poverty. We want to um, make sure that people are, are lifted out of, of that situation. And if we look at a system like social care, I think this depicts like the, exactly what we are trying to deal with. So you have a really atomised workforce, a privatised workforce, one where terms and conditions are very poor. It's a mainly female workforce, of course, there are men working in that sector. And what we are saying is, you know, for, for, I saw a woman's rota the other day. She was on from 7 in the morning till 11 at night. She's not paid in between visits. Uh, she's not paid mileage either. So actually she is drawn, uh, she is drawn even below the minimum wage for, for those hours because she's paid in essence for about five or six hours and she can't take up any other form of employment in that time. So, you know, that, that can't be right, can it? We no, I agree. But the problem the is, is there are some, some companies that are, are very mm. badly behaved. But I don't understand why yeah. you've not picked on those companies rather than big companies that employ a lot of people like Asda, like Uber, like Amazon, uh, who have yes, all said have who have all said that they're responsible. Yeah, and we have seen it documented, haven't we? It's, you know, it's well reported that there've been ambulances called out to Amazon warehouses where people, um, you know, we heard of a woman. Well, Amazon birth. say it's Amazon a- say that some of those ambulance uh, arrivals have been because of uh, personal problems that people have had, and I don't think it's mm. fair to blame Amazon to say that Amazon are actually causing people to have to be taken to hospital because well, they're making them work. I think I think you're over egging the pudding, aren't you? Do you? No, I, I don't think I am because I've spoken to people who work there, um, and the kind of the, the pressure is 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 huge. What what we are what we are asking for actually is very basic. It's what happens in a lot of other nations. We are asking that the minimum rate of pay. Uh, when worked out on full-time hours, allows you to live a good life, allows you to be taken. What out would you of describe it. as a good we life? Are, what does that we, mean? Well, you know, you know, and, and this is, this is a relative term, but at least be able to afford your bills, be able to afford food, your rent. You know, a treat now and again. Why is that not something that we are asking for? What people? Well, lots of people can do that. Lots of people can decide how they spend their money. But well, you know, you're rejecting even that the UN reports figure. Of I don't. I, I don't take the UN poverty. seriously at all. No, I don't take. So their... how do you explain the nine? 15,000 food parcels given out across County Well, Dole. I've always said that what, if you give food away for free... Well, I think if you give food away for free, people will come and get it. If you gave oh televisions away God, for free, honestly, they would also do such it. such right-wing nonsense. No, it's not right-wing nonsense. You, you want people to work a... Oh, hang on a minute. You want people no. to work a four-day week, right? So no, you're actually going to reduce the ability for people to make as much money news, as they do fake, now. That, that's fake news. You, you, do you honestly think that people enjoy standing in a food bank queue waiting for people to give them food. I don't think they enjoy it, but I think if you are willing, if you give if you give things children. away for free, it is people, it's not patronising. Well, let me ask you one last people question. People don't understand. No, hold let on. me ask you people one last question. Understand the conditions of poverty. We are not suggesting a four-day week. Actually, you've We're told. You, well, excuse working. me. That's in your manifesto that you want everyone to work no, a four-day week. No, it's not. Point to me where that's in the manifesto. So, you, so, so the announcement by Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald that you want everyone to work a four-day week is not true. Is that well, what you say? You must have been getting that from a third party. What they are, Well, what Richard they are saying, Bergen was on television on Friday night talking about how the four-day week did not apply to the NHS, but it applied to everything else, and he got that wrong. You didn't say that. You just that's just you know it's just making it up. What we are saying is that we. You're saying he didn't say that. He didn't say that it would apply everywhere else. Really? 
Okay, so yeah. the four-day week is now a myth, is it? Have you given do up you on want, that? Do, do you want me to talk about this seriously, or should we just squabble over whether it's a four-day week or not? Well, you uh, it's I'll your policy. Out, is it not your policies for people I'll to work a four-day week? Proposals. I'll set out the proposals on excessive hours. So this is what we are proposing. We are proposing that we know that workers in Britain work some of the longest hours of, in Europe other than Greece and Austria. We know that there are people who have very little leisure time and we are saying, or very little time to see their families, we are saying that we will look at reducing the yearly average hour that a worker works moving towards an ambition by the end of the next decade not tw- not this decade not 2020 not in a few weeks time by the end of next decade to a 32 hour week that is an ambition and it's a very correct ambition to have knowing that there are people who don't have enough hours and people who have excessive hours and we'll do that through a few mechanisms you know so, so increasing the time in between shifts increasing the minimum levels of annual leave, statutory annual leave that people have. And this will all be done in consultation with employers right. and workers. And but not, but not on a four-day week, right? No, it has to be sector specific. How could you have a four day week? Well, you tell me. You, you're the example. guys that came up with the plan. Let me let me leave you with one final thought, Laura. You're yeah. very well paid as an MP. You work yeah. very hard, and I'm sure you work many more hours than a lot of people do. But I was looking at your expenses claims for the last year, mm. and you've claimed for three items under a pound. Can you explain what that was for? Got. In, in, when you when you're an MP, you have like I think the the way the expenses system is sometimes mischaracterised. So there'll be office costs, so stationery that my office needs. It's not a pound going into my bank account. That I'm like, oh great, I've finally got that pound back from the state. This will be office costs for something that my office staff need.